House Coal is a former noble house from the Stormlands. They blazon their arms with ten black pellets on scarlet. House Cole appears to be in a vassal house of House Dondarrion in the Dornish marches. We do not know much about their history, therefore we don't know if they are of Andal or First Men descent. But what we can assume is given they are marcher lords and are the vassals of House Dondarrion of Blackhaven, they have spent their history defending the southern borders of the Stormlands from the Dornish incursions during the Targaryen era of Westeros. By far, the only true, well-known member of House Cole was Sir Criston Cole, who was born in 83 AC and was active during the Dance of the Dragons and its build-up. He would leave a huge mark in the history of Westeros, and while we don't know the fate of House Cole, thanks to Sir Criston, it will forever be remembered in the history books and tales of the small folk across Westeros. Sir Criston Cole would rise from nothing to become Lord Commander of the Kingsguard of Viserys I Targaryen, and would later gain the title of the Kingmaker for his role in convincing King Aegon II to claim his father's throne at the onset of the Dance of the Dragons. He would later also serve as Hand of the King for Aegon after Otto Hightower was removed from the position. Criston had coal black hair and pale green eyes, with many ladies describing him as charming and handsome. It is assumed that given the name of his house and Criston's look, other members of the house share it. Sir Criston was also an exceptionally skilled warrior, particularly with a morning star. With his skilled arms held amongst the best the Kingsguard and most knights ever saw, Criston Cole was born in 82 AC. But little is known of his early life apart from the fact that he was born to the steward of Lord Dondarrion at Blackhaven in the Dornish Marches. His first notable appearance in the history books comes in 104 AC when he won a melee at the tourney at Maidenpool to celebrate the ascension of King Viserys Targaryen to the throne. His performance in the tourney drew the attention of many at the royal court as he managed to knock Dark Sister, one of the famed Valyrian steel swords of House Targaryen, from the hands of Prince Daemon Targaryen with his morning star. Given the known prowess of Prince Daemon, this stunned all at the tourney. He gave his victor's laurel to seven-year-old Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, whose favour he would go on to wear when he unhorsed Daemon in the joust, as well as the twins Sir Eric and Sir Eric Cargill of the Kingsguard, before being unhorsed by Lord Lyman Malister. Thereafter, King Viserys indulged his young daughter Rhaenyra by naming Criston her personal sworn shield. Later in 105 AC, the 23-year-old Criston became a member of the Kingsguard, taking the place of the legendary Sir Ryan Redwine. However, he would still act as the sworn shield of the princess. Criston continued to wear a nearest favour of Tawny's during this time. In 111 AC, he unhorsed Sir Gwain Hightower, the younger brother and champion to King Viserys' second wife and queen. Alison Hightower. Half a year later, Damon departed the capital after quarrelling with Viserys. When Sir Harold Westerling, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, died in 112 AC, Criston was named as his successor to lead the White Cloaks. In 113 AC, King Viserys arranged for his reluctant daughter, Rhaenyra, to marry Sir Laenon Valarian. According to Septon Eustace's accounts of events, Criston slipped into Rhaenyra's bedchamber to confess his love, offering to abscond with her to one of the three cities across the narrow sea, where he would pledge his sword to some merchant prince. Rhaenyra refused him, saying a Targaryen was meant to be more than a wife of a sellsword, and that if he could forget his Kingsguard vow, he could easily forget their marriage vows. However, according to the court full mushroom's testimony of the events, it was in fact Rhaenyra who unsuccessfully attempted to seduce Cole in the White Sword Tower. The spurned princess took solace in Sir Harwin Strong as a result. Whatever the way of it, Kristen went from being her staunchest defender to her most bitter foe, and Rhaenyra soon left for Driftmark with Sir Harwin Strong as a new sworn shield. In 114 AC, Sir Criston attended the wedding tourney of Rhaenyra and Laenor, which included seven days of feasting and jousting. Being a knight, he chose to fight in the wedding tourney, but to the shock of all at the festivities, the former sworn shield of the princess now fought with Queen Alicent Hightower's token, and during a melee, left Harwin, Rhaenyra's reported lover, with a broken collarbone and shattered elbow. Criston's morning star 
also crapped the helm of Lenor's favourite and lover, Sir Joffrey Longmouth, with the Knight of Kisses dying from his wounds six days later. While many were angered at Criston for this, including King Viserys, Queen Alicent did not share their displeasure, and asked that he be made her own personal sworn shield. Criston became a staunch supporter of Alicent, and a member of the Greens ever after. However, it should be pointed out, even in tourneys, which is mostly for sport, there is always a risk of injury and death, a risk Longmouth willingly accepted. It can be argued that Cole intentionally set out to harm those close to Rhaenyra, but death and injury such as these are not uncommon in events like this. But now, part of the Green Faction and sworn shield to the Queen, Cole grew very close to her two eldest sons, Aegon and Aemond, training them both in martial pursuits. It is said that he moulded Aemon into a fierce and dangerous fighter despite the loss of one of his eyes, with even Aegon becoming a decent swordsman. When King Viserys died in 129, causing the breakout of the Dance of the Dragons, Criston and Alicent Hightower assembled the small council to discuss the succession, keeping the king's death a secret from the public for several days. It is noted that Criston objected to Rhaenyra Targaryen, Princess of Dragonstone, or her husband, Prince Daemon Targaryen, holding power in any form, and he also was one of the many to repeat the rumour that Rhaenyra's children from Sir Lainor Valarian were in fact the bastards of Harwin Strong. Instead of Rhaenyra, Viserys' named heir, the Greens wanted to crown her younger half-brother, Prince Aegon, Viserys' eldest son. According to Septus Neustus, Lord Lyman Beesbury was the only member of the Green Council who dissented and spoke in favour of Rhaenyra. Some accounts claim that Criston cut Beesbury's throat, while the full mushroom claims that Criston instead flung Lyman to his death from a window. Neither Eustace or Mushroom were present at the meeting, so the truth of the matter will never be known, other than that Beesbury died in the council chamber. Any supporters of Rhaenyra who remained at court were taken by Criston into custody and placed in the black cells to the point they were over capacity. When it came time for the Greens to make their move, Aegon was nowhere to be found. Thus, Cole ventured into the streets of King's Landing to find the prince to convince him to ascend the Iron Throne. Mushroom wrote that Criston found him with a young girl in Flea Bottom, while Eustace claims that Aegon was in a more respectable situation with the daughter of a trader. Both accounts suggest that the prince had been drinking heavily. According to the Septon, Criston told the prince him and his siblings, and even his young children, would be killed by Rhaenyra if he did not claim the throne for himself. No matter what Cole said to the prince, it worked, and Aegon claimed his father's throne. Cole would forever be known in the pages of history and to the small folk as the kingmaker for the role he played in the rise of King Aegon II. During Aegon's coronation in the Dragon Pit, it was Sir Criston who placed the crown of Aegon the Conqueror on the young king's head. Rhaenyra Targaryen was at Dragonstone at the time of Aegon II's coronation. Of course, she refused to support her half-brother's claim to the throne. Thus officially, the conflicts which engulfed the Seven Kingdoms and became known as the Dance of the Dragons began and caused irreparable damage to House Targaryen. Many of the lords of the Seven Kingdoms were aware of Viserys Targaryen's wish to have Rhaenyra succeed him as House Targaryen's first ruling queen, many having sworn oaths to such effect when she was first named his heir many years ago. Thus, many of these lords threw their support behind the princess. As the Blacks gathered their forces and allies, Aegon II became frustrated with his grandfather, Otto Hightower, who was acting as his hand of the king and insisted the office be awarded to Sir Criston Cole instead, in response to blood and cheese having killed the young Prince Jaehaerys Targaryen at the order of Prince Daemon as retaliation for Aemond killing Rhaenyra's son Lucerys, the new hand ordered the reluctant Sir Eric Cargill of the Kingsguard to infiltrate Dragonstone in the guise of his twin, Sir Eric who was supporting Rhaenyra's claim. Grand Maester Munkin believes that Criston wanted Arik to assassinate Rhaenyra, ending the war with as little blood as possible. While Mushroom wrote that Arik was supposed to kill Rhaenyra's sons, Jaehaerys and Joffrey Valarian, with some suggestions that these targets were part of a personal vendetta against the apparent bastards of Harwin Strong. Criston's schemes faltered when Arik and Eric came face to face and the twins killed each other in combat, and thus the assassination plot failed. Criston marched his army on Rosby and Stokeworth and forced their levies to join the host of green supporters. He then led the sack of Duskendale. Later, he 
prepared for the arrival of Princess Rhaenys Targaryen and her dragon Maelys at the Battle of Rook's Rest, having planned for King Aegon on Sunfire and Prince Aemond on Vhagar to wait in ambush with himself as a law for the queen who never was. Rhaenys and Maelys were killed in the fighting and Aegon was left badly injured. Aemond and Criston killed the garrison of Rook's Rest and carried the head Lord Stoughton back to King's Landing. With Aegon recovering from his injuries, Aemon acted as protector of the realm and Prince Regent, effectively giving him the power of the king in his brother's stead while he recovered. Aemon kept his close friend and mentor Criston as the hand. Prince Aemon Targaryen and Criston desired to retake Harrenhal from Prince Daemon, whom had taken the ruin in the first days of the war in the name of Rhaenyra. Daemon was using the ruins as a rallying point for the forces of the Riverlands, whom supported the Blacks. While Lord Jason Lannister marched towards the God's Eye with a host of Westermen in support of King Aegon, Criston departed King's Landing with another 4,000 Greens and Aemon on Vhagar. But things did not go to plan as Lord Jason was killed at the Battle of the Red Fork and his Westermen struggled under Lord Humphrey Lefford during the rest of the march to Harrenhal with many foes in their way. After defeating Sir Oswald and Lord Darry by the shores of the God's Eye, Criston's host found Harrenhal had been deserted by the Blacks when they finally arrived at the castle. Prince Aemon saw this as a great victory, but he was outraged upon learning that Daemon had flown away on Craxis to aid Rhaenyra with the fall of King's Landing. Meanwhile, Humphrey's Lannister host was shattered in the battle by the lakeshore by the Rivermen and the Winter Wolves. In response to the Blacks' victories, Criston urged Aemon to retreat south and join the host of Greens led by Ormond Hightower and Prince Daron Targaryen. But Aemon refused, however, and decided instead to burn the Riverlands with Vhagar's dragon flame. Criston marched south from Harrenhal the remaining host of 3600 Greens to meet the Hightower host without Prince Aemond. Traveling along the western shore of the God's Eye, the Blacks destroyed villages and befouled waters on his line of march, denying supplies to the Greens. Rivermen such as young Benjicott Blackwood, Lord of Raventree Hall, harried Christian's host as they marched south, and dozens of Greens were killed at the Crossed Elms in an ambush that made use of corpses of the fallen Green soldiers at the Battle of the Lakeshore, placed in a grotesque mock feast to serve as a distraction. While marching from the God's Eye to the Blackwater Rush, Criston's surviving host was met at a ridge by an army of a thousand black, led by Sir Garibald Grey, Sir Pate of Longleaf, and Roderick Dustin, Lord of Barrington. Criston offered to yield if the blacks would spare the lives of his men, but he was refused. When Criston then challenged all three of his counterparts to single combat, rather than waste the lives of their men, Pate had Rob Rivers and his archers strike down the Kingmaker with three arrows. While the manner of his death did spare the lives of the men of the Blacks. Hundreds of Criston's men were then killed by the Rivermen and Winter Wolves in the ensuing battle that became known as the Butcher's Ball. Some to this day question if the manner of Sir Criston's death at the hands of the archers was dishonourable, considering the circumstances of the meeting between the Lords and the Knights. It is said that Garibald and Pate brought Criston's head on a spear to the First Battle of Tumbleton later in the war, again causing some historians to question the honour of these so-called heroes. Through his actions, Sir Criston Cole earned his place in the history of Westeros, be it for good or ill. Criston's motives in supporting King Aegon II in the Dance of the Dragons are unclear to say the least, and really depends on the sources of information you believe. Some say that he acted for ambition and power for himself, as Aegon was more controllable than his willful half-sister, Rhaenyra and that Rhaenyra's spurning of him added a personal dimension to the conflict. Others allow Criston more noble motives and claimed he was defending ancient Andal customs, giving precedence to sons over daughters in terms of succession, or that he did not wish to see Rhaenyra's children, who he believed to be strong bastards, inherit the Iron Throne. No matter if you agree with his actions or not, he is remembered as one of the most formidable warriors of his age, among the most legendary of the Kingsguard, and a man who ultimately embodied some of the best and worst aspects of the King's Guard, and because of Sir Criston, House Cole will always be remembered in the songs and histories of the Seven Kingdoms.